Let's do some examples that incorporate the sum and difference formula for sine and cosine, along with inverses. So for this first one, let's do the cosine of the inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds plus the inverse cosine of 5 thirteenths. So the first thing to realize is that inverses are just angles. So I have two angles inside of this. So let me give them two different names. I'll call them maybe alpha and then beta. So as long as the domains are satisfied, so on the inverse tangent, the domain is just all real. So of course, negative 4 thirds is real. For inverse cosine, the domain is negative 1 to 1. So we're good on that. So by the definition of the inverses, if alpha is inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds, then tangent of alpha would be negative 4 thirds. If beta is the inverse cosine, 5 thirteenths, then the cosine of beta is 5 thirteenths. So now I'm going to draw these angles in the proper quadrant. So since we're talking about an inverse tangent, the outputs can only be in the first and the fourth quadrants. So since this output is negative, it's got to be in the fourth. Okay, so opposite over adjacent, so opposite is 4, adjacent is 3, and the negative side will be the 4. I'm sure you can figure out the hypotenuse would then be 5. Okay, so then for inverse cosine, the outputs are only in quadrants 1 and 2. So since the output is positive, we're in quadrant 1. So drawing this triangle with the cosine of 5 13, the adjacent is 5, hypotenuse is 13, and this is a popular triangle, 5, 12, 13 triangle, so opposite is 12. Okay, so the first one was alpha, second one was beta. So rewriting the original problem as cosine of alpha plus beta, we can now find all of this by expanding using the sum formula. Okay, so for cosine, we have cosine, cosine, sine, sine and then change that sine to a minus. So cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one, minus sine of the first one, sine of the second one. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine, change the sine. And from our pictures, we can find everything. So in our alpha, the cosine is going to be 3 fifths. In our beta, the cosine is going to be 5 thirteenths. In our alpha, the sine is going to be negative 4 fifths. For beta, the sine is going to be 12 thirteenths. Okay, so common denominator, they both have the same denominator, 5 times 13, which is 65. So I'm going to have 15, and then the two negatives make the plus. So the 15 and the 48 will become 63. 63 over 65. Okay, let's do one more like that because they are a little bit trickier. Let's do a sine this time. So the sine of the inverse sine of negative 4 fifths plus the inverse tangent of 3 fourths. Okay, again, just understand inverses are angles. So I'm going to call the first inverse alpha and the second one beta. So since the domains are satisfied, because negative 4 fifths is between negative 1 and 1, 3 fourths just needs to be real because it's inverse tangent. Domains are satisfied. So by the definition of inverses, the sine of alpha will be negative 4 fifths. And then the tangent of beta will be 3 fourths. Okay, so I'm going to draw the triangles in the proper quadrants based on the inverses. So inverse sine, the outputs are only in the first and the fourth quadrants. Since it's negative, it's got to be in the fourth. It cannot be anywhere else. So the opposite would be negative 4, hypotenuse would be 5, making the adjacent 3. For beta, Inverse tangent, the outputs are only 1 and 4, just like sine. 
So then that wasn't positive, it's gonna be in the first. Okay, so opposite over adjacent, making the hypotenuse five. So rewriting the original problem as sine of alpha plus beta. That's really what it was. We're gonna expand that out using the sum formula for sine. So sine, cosine, cosine, sine, keep the sine. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, keep that plus. And then looking at the pictures, we can find all of this. Sine of alpha, negative four fifths. Cosine of beta is four fifths. Cosine of alpha, three fifths. And then sine of beta is also three fifths. Okay, so multiplying out the denominators, they're both 25, so that's our common denominator. So then multiplying the top side, I get negative 16 plus 9, so negative 7. Okay, 